he thought, the earth is beneath my feet to be trod upon, pissed upon. This malodorous, foul earth is below. I stand above, separate. I did not rise up from this earth engendered by male and female locked into the lust of the night like some dog or hyena. He thought, I was conceived by a cool breath from the vast purity overhead and descended to earth to reign over all the things of the earth. The purpose of the earth is to please and support me. I am obliged to destroy all that do not bend to my will. It is with this thought that the Garden of Eden shut its door and the door to the nut house swung wide open. <laughs> As we tumble down through the millennia, all the forms of human madness have passed through this door. All the megalomania and narcissism, the psycho and sociopathologies, all the disorders of the spirit. Now, as we stagger into this new millennium, bent over by the weight of history, we are no longer new to the earth. Our footprint, footprints through the nut house door are multitudinous and are traced in blood. The door is stuck open and the hinges are broken, never again to be shut for this massive torrent of humanity relentlessly tipping the scales of life against itself. But the door can be shut for a few. Truth seekers and lovers of life and the pure of spirit can shut the door and grow the garden again in their own lives. To shut the nut house door, you must first take off the cloak of many colors and walk naked and awkward out onto the earth. You must greet and hug your sister cat, brother dog. You must ask Uncle Owl of his wisdom and Aunt Coyote of her knowledge. Then you must kneel down on the dust and dirt and mud of the naked earth. And with all the humility of the, dimmed, of the condemned, you must place your hands upon the earth and say, Thank you, Mother Earth, Father Earth, for my life. The door will close and the garden will grow. <laughs> All right, uh, our mini feature of the evening, Hal Robbins, come on up here and just stand forth and deliver. Give him a nice round. Give him a round. Give him a round. Well, you can say I kicked ass, but I remember forgetting my way in the middle of the poem. Anyway, I want to ask, um, I understand I have eight minutes. But yeah. does that count to the palaver where you're not actually speaking yes. poetry? It, oh, yeah. it does. Well, well, well then don't, I better... worry. don't worry about it. Just do a little palaver, do your poetry. All right. Well, the reason I wanted to ask that is uh, the featured poet tonight mentioned the sky burial and the vultures coming to take the pieces away. This, I think, is the proper way to go, to give back what you've taken from the earth. And I want to know if anyone ever heard of the Towers of Silence in India. Oh yeah, yeah. Where they take their bodies and they leave them for the vultures. Uh, but recently the vultures are, are dying because of a chemical, an antibiotic Monsanto has introduced which feeds, to, has been fed to the bullocks in India. It uh, is good for them apparently but fatal to the vultures and so now the bodies are being brought to the Towers of Silence but there are few vultures if any to carry them away. This is a poem, one of a, a number I know, which is pro-vulture. I am very much on the side of this creature, the vulture. This poem is by David Bottoms, and it is called Under the Vulture Tree. We have always, I'm sorry, let me start that again. We have all 
seen them circling pastures, have looked up from the mouth of a barn, a pine clearing, the fences of our own backyards, and have stood amazed by the one slow wing beat, the endless dihedral drift. But I had never seen so many, so close, hundreds, every limb of the dead oak feathered black. And I cut the engine, let the river grab the john boat and pull it toward the tree. The black leaves shined, the pink fruit blossomed, red, ugly as a human heart. Then, as I passed under their dream, I saw for the first time its soft countenance, the raw, fleshy jowls, wrinkled and generous like the faces of the very old who have grown to empathize with everything. And I drifted away from them, slow on the pull of the river, reluctant, looking back at their roost, calling them what I never called them, what they are, those dwarfed, transfiguring angels who flock to the side of the poisoned fox, the mud turtle crushed on the shoulder of the road, who pray over the leaf graves of the anonymous lost with mercy enough to consume us all and give us wings. <laughs> He's a living contemporary American poet. Uh, this, however, is by William Blake, who was none of those things. And uh, I'll do another poem if there's anything left of my time when I'm finished. It's called The Mental Traveler. I traveled through a land of men, a land of men and women too, and heard and saw such dreadful things as cold earth wanderers never knew. For there the babe is born in joy that is begotten in dire woe, just as we reap in joy the fruit which we in bitter tears do sow. And if the babe is born a boy, he's given to a woman old, who nails him down upon a rock, catches his shrieks in cups of gold. She binds iron thorns about his head. She pierces both his hands and feet. She cuts his heart out at his side to make it feel both cold and heat. Her fingers number every nerve, just as a miser counts his gold. She lives upon his shrieks and cries, and she grows young as he grows old, till he becomes a bleeding youth, and she becomes a virgin bright. Then he rends up his manacles and binds her down for his delight. He plants himself in all her nerves, just as a husbandman his mold, and she becomes his dwelling place and garden fruitful seventyfold. An aged shadow, soon he fades, wandering round an earthly cot, fulfilled all with gems and gold which he by industry had got. For these are the gems of the human soul, the ruby and pearl of the lovesick eye, the countless gold of the aching heart, the martyr's groan, the lover's sigh. They are his meat, they are his drink. He feeds the beggar and the poor and the wayfaring traveler. Forever open is his door. His grief is their eternal joy. They make the roofs and walls to ring till from the fire on the hearth a little female babe does spring. And she is all of solid fire and gems and gold that none his hand dare stretch to touch her infant form or wrap her in his swaddling band. But she comes to the man she loves, if young or old or rich or poor, they soon drive out the aged host, a beggar at another's door. He wanders, weeping far away, until some other take him in, oft blind and age-bent, sore distressed, until he can a maiden win, and to
to allay his freezing age, the poor man takes her in his arms. The cottage fades before his sight, the garden and its lovely charms. The guests are scattered through the land, while the eye altering alters all. The senses wrap themselves in fear, and the flat earth becomes a ball. The stars, sun, moon, all shrink away, a desert vast without a bound, and nothing left to eat or drink but a dark desert all around. The honey of her infant lips, the bread and wine of her sweet smile, the wild game of her roving eye does him to infancy beguile. For as he eats and drinks, he grows younger and younger every day, while on the desert wide they both wander in terror and dismay. Like the wild stag, she flees away. Her fear plants many a thicket wild, while he pursues her night and day by various arts of love beguiled, by various arts of love and hate till the wide desert planted o'er with labyrinths of wayward love, where roam the lion, wolf, and boar. The trees give forth sweet ecstasy to all within the desert roam, and many a city builded here, and many a pleasant shepherd's home. But when they spy the frowning babe, terror strikes through the region wide, they cry, the babe, the babe is born, and flee away on every side. For who dare touch that infant form? His arm is withered to the root. Lions, wolves, boars, all howling, flee, and every tree does shed its fruit. And none dare touch that frowning form, except it be a woman old. She nails him down upon the rock, and all is done, as I have told. No, 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 you're going to do one more. Oh, yeah, I'll do one. Okay. One more might be the better. Dylan Thomas again. The force that through the green fuse drives the flower, drives my green age, that blasts the roots of trees, is my destroyer. And I am dumb to tell the crooked rose my youth is bent by the same wintry fever. The force that drives the water through the rocks drives my red blood, that dries the mouthing streams, turns mine to wax. And I am dumb to mouth unto my veins how from the mountain spring the same mouth sucks. The hand that whirls the water in the pool stirs the quicksand that ropes the blowing wind hauls my shroud sail. And I am dumb to tell the hanging man how of my clay is made the hangman's lime. The lips of time leech to the fountain head, love drips and gathers, and the fallen blood shall calm her sores, and I am dumb to tell the weather's wind how time has ticked a heaven round the stars, and I am dumb to tell the lover's tomb how at my sheet goes the same crooked worm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Robert, you All right, as tradition has it, we have the uh, door prizes of the evening. I have to ask, did you want to read or? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay, just want to make sure. All right. So the, the prizes as we have them here, just so you know, uh, real zombies. <laughs> just look right the war on science. Like there is going to be a zombie apocalypse. Do you guys know? Hey, what's his name? The Republican president, one of the pre pre Republican presidential candidates, have talked about zombie apocalypse. Right, He's right. on stage, running for president. Talk. Oh, I can't remember which one. They're all stupid. 
Anyway, more on science, speaking of that. The world is round, fellows, and we have been to the moon. We did actually go there. People doubt that. Uh, the living clocks, this is all about the, na the natural living clocks that we are. Uh, diurnal cycles, life cycles, everything. Very good. They didn't read the whole thing very much. Rattle, a lot of poems to rattle about. Archaeology.